everybody. Sorry I'm late. Time kind of got away from me. Time kind of got away from me. Oops. Time kind of got away from me. So I hope you're all doing fantastic today. It's another beautiful day here in Ontario, Canada. And I thought I would do some bird painting. Since I'm doing Birdtober 22, one of the birds that we were given to do is this golden Baltimore Oriole. And I see people coming in the chat. Hey, Lena, I see Zandra. Good to see you all. Hope you're having a great day. So uh, this is just a Google um, search photo. And uh, I'll put this here for you to see. Let's see. I'm going to just pop out my chat. And that'd be better for me. All right. So how many of you enjoy painting birds or would like to learn to paint birds? I've really learned a lot from doing paint paint or Birdtober, <laughs> that's hard to say. Uh, and I've restricted myself from using too many uh, different types of mediums. So basically all I've been using is watercolor brush pens, the clear water ones, and colored pencils for finishing details, that type of thing. And a little bit of uh, white wash for some areas that need to be a little bit brighter. And I'm only working in this scrap or sketchbook of mine. And this isn't watercolor paper. It's just ordinary basic paper. Uh, so is everything looking good for you? Hey, Kathleen. So the lighting's okay, that type of thing. Might be a little bit too bright. I want you to be able to see my drawing. It's all good. Uh, good afternoon, Kathleen. I'd like to learn to paint with it. Awesome. Now, they don't have to be as detailed when you're doing the watercolor part. So I'm not doing like a botanical drawing where every little single feather, or not botanical, but you know what I mean, natural um, bird drawings. Um, this is, I do most of my detail work with either pen or colored pencil. So in this, the way I work with uh, watercolor on these um, sketchbook pages is they have to be um, not too many layers because this is just sketchbook paper. It's not watercolor paper. So the possibility of it pilling or seeping through to the other side is really high. So you want to get few layers as possible as far as the wet watercolor areas. So um, with this one, with each uh, bird uh, picture you get, or um, I, if you're just learning, I wouldn't uh, try and do it by looking at one in nature, <laughs> like live, because they you'll never get the um, 
shapes down because they're moving too much. But shape wise, um, this one here, they're very simple shape wise for drawing. So right in here is a, a large egg, egg shape. So that's how I start my uh, watercolor drawings is I look at shapes, not the bird, the shape. So the biggest shapes first I draw. So this egg shape here, and then there's another egg shape here. And it overlaps the bigger part of the body. Then I look at my wing, and it's kind of a, a long oval. And then I put my tail in, and it's kind of a triangle. And then you just attach your areas on the outside and then erase parts that you don't need. It's not a whole lot of fine detail that you want in this. You want bare, bare minimum um, marks first. Now, the only thing that I pay attention to a little bit is where the eye is placed on the head. And usually it is close to the mouth. And this one is just slightly above where the mouth opens and the shape of the beak and the length of the beak. So the length of this one is almost the same length as across the head. It's got a really long beak. And then the other thing I look at are the way the uh, feathers on the wing go. And because a lot of people tend to um, do this wrong. So you can do this in shapes too, because this part is the smaller feathers on the top of the wing. And there's a shape here. Then there's a bunch of feathers that are a little bit shorter. And it just goes underneath. And look at the shape. It's almost a triangle. Or not a triangle. A diamond shape. And then there's a longer triangle right here. And then you section it off by the... Basically the color is either a dark shade or a light shade. This one's light. And it separates the different... Um, feather areas and then you can add your shapes of your um, colors of the yellow so I always look at shapes and it takes a while for you to get used to looking at it as a shape and not this is a wing this is a feather this is an eye always look at your stuff in shapes first then when you're you've got your shapes down then you can look at it as a whole is it is it angled the right way is it um, proportioned accordingly so you can measure your head how many head shapes do i have to go down the bird so is it the you always compare size or shape with the rest of the bird So now we're, I'm going to be doing, this is a smaller version. So now I'm going to start painting. And what I'd like to do is the lighter areas, so, so the yellows. And I'm going to do the lightest yellow first. And I've got my palette out here. Uh, I think you can see it. I should spray it with some water and it's kind of a fairly bright yellow um, the lightest part so I'm just going to put I have quite a bit of yellow to put in so I'm going to um, use quite a bit here this is almost on the green side, so I want to warm it up just a, a tad, and I'll just add a little bit of Indian yellow to it, just to warm that up, just to stop it from being 
a little bit green. Okay, I'm going to move this over a little bit more so you can see a little more of my palette there. Um, there. So I want to start out light. So I got water on my brush. And remember, I'm working on sketchbook paper, so it's a little different than if you were working on watercolor paper. So just using the very tip of my, my brush, I'm just going to fill in those areas that are yellow. Now, if there's a little bit of um, area that's got a little bit of black in it, some feathers have uh, a little bit of black, usually around the beak or where it's uh, transitioning into the body of a black area. Just fill it in with the uh, yellow. Because we can always go over top of that yellow with a, uh, a black. And I'm going to even put in along the tail here where the yellow is. There's a little bit. Just along the little bit of the tip of the tail. Now kind of have to pay attention to your reference photo and I strongly recommend getting a reference photo for any bird you're doing because they're all very different. And then let's see, there's a little bit of yellow on the just tips of the wing here. Just pay attention to where you want those little bits of yellow. Okay. Now I want to warm this up a little bit with that Indian yellow. So I've added a little bit more Indian yellow to my mix. So a little warmer on the chest area. And just a bit down on this back area where the um, hair is kind of overlapping the wing and the shaded area where the neck is and I'm just I'm just dabbing because I have quite a bit of water still on the page now there is a little bit a little bit more I'm going to just get um, full on um, of that Indian yellow. Because it's fairly, fairly um, deep on the chest area. So I'm just dabbing. And underneath here is a bit dark. So now let's dry that. There's a lot of drying involved. Gun. You want to make sure it's really good and dry. Hey, Carol. Good to see you. Okay. 
All right. Paper towel. All right. Now, I want to make a nice black. So I'm going to use Payne's Gray. And umber, burnt umber. That usually makes a nice gray or black, depending on how thick your pigment is. And you just kind of have to play with it till you get the right consistency. Now I'm going to put in the black areas, so around the eye. And the wing. I have my reference photo, so I don't really need to worry too much about all these lines because I can look at my reference photo. Now, when you're going along the edge of this uh, yellow, flick your brush, the very tip of your brush, into that yellow. Make sure you're uh, paying attention to the direction of the feathers, though because it will be uneven a little bit. But pay attention to your reference also. Okay, so I'm looking at my wings here. And I'm not too worried about it being jet black. Because the light is shining on it, they have a bit of a sheen to their feathers. So you're going to have kind of a, depending on the bird, some birds have an actual uh, color uh, change in their black area like blues or purples sometimes like crows you'll find have a, a luminance color or starlings some starlings have it And if you if it's a little bit off, don't worry about it. As long as it's um, not a major color difference, I wouldn't worry too much about it. And a lot of times you can fix it with gouache or colored pencil. Okay, so there's a little bit small line right there and then down the tail 
this is fairly straight as far as the line and it's a little bit dark underneath that wing there you can allow for that by adding a little bit more pigment on your brush All right, I think that's pretty good. There's a little bit of white in there too, but we'll add that with some gouache or colored pencil. And the center of his eye is black. Okay, I missed a little spot on his leg here. Right. Now his um, legs are kind of a, it's almost a, it's, it's a gray, but it's got a little bit of purple in it. So you can add just a smidgen of um, dioxine purple to that gray mix. So just take a little bit. So it's a grayish purple. And we'll color his feet. And he's got really dark nails. Um, what else? That's about it for that color. Hi, Anne. Good to see you. Now his, his eye is red. So I've got some red on here that'll work. And this was probably Alizarin Crimson by the uh, M. Graham. And we'll just put a little bit of that around. And his beak is fairly red too. Now I'm going to start off with a, a paler color though. Because there are some highlights on his beak. So we want to just color in those, the whole area with that lighter red. All right, so we'll let that dry, and while that's drying, I see the branch he's sitting on is almost a pinky color also. So more like mm, you could actually use some of this uh, black color we, we did, and then just add a little bit of that red to it. We'll give it a quick coat. So how many of you are doing the bird tober? Or did you do something different for the month of October? I know a lot of people get into the Inktober.
or maybe you don't like doing um, something creative for the whole month. What do you think of it? Is it too stressful? What would your idea, ideal mm, challenge be? Would it be maybe every couple days for the month or once a week? What would you like to see? I'm going to add a little bit more black to that. And I'm just going to do the bottom area of this branch. And this is going to be the shadowed area. So it's a lot more dark around the bottom of the bird here. So he's casting a shadow, but you don't want it black. And then that one's good, just over here. And then we have some little specks here and there on the, the wood that's casting a bit more. And there's actually a little bit more on the very top here. I'm probably going to have to let that dry a little bit. Can add a few specks. I'm, I'm doing Zentangle for Ink. Awesome, I am. All right. Let's get that a dry. Now, for those watching on uh, the replay or if you're in chat, click on some of these names because there's quite a few here that do streams also. Um, different mediums. So we're all a great community to learn from. So check out. There's uh, the Magical Touch TMT. There's Anne Lair. There's Miss Linux 2010. Uh, just go through. You'd be surprised. Uh, Scraps to Beauty by Zandra. Kathleen, do you have it, um, videos? I don't remember. There's so many of you. And put your links in if, if you uh, want, want to put your links in for your channel. Go right ahead. And then the... Uh, People on the replay can click on them. I'm all about supporting the creativity of others. <laughs> it's important to create and relax. And this is a great way of relaxing. And you can do it. I don't care what your level is. All it takes is practice. You don't do videos? Okay. So make sure to, um, and it doesn't have to be anything fancy or you don't have to have the perfect looking uh, journal or sketchbook, whatever you're using. Just do it. That's the main thing. Just start doing it because it's amazing what kind of... Um, stress reliever it is. And when you get into the zone, you got some music on or whatever you like to 
uh, have going when you're uh, creating, you get in this zone. And that's the magical part is when you get into that zone and all of a sudden you look up and you two hours have gone by and you don't even know. <laughs> it's it seems like five minutes ago. So. And that's so physically stress relieving and it's very important. And everybody has a creative need in them. It may be cooking, it may be sewing, it may be um, gardening. There's all kinds of uh, ways of finding that creative outlet. Now I'm going to add this chest area. See how dark it is in here? The shadows. There's a little bit of light area right there. But we need to add a little bit more there. So I'm going to take that uh, Indian yellow and add a little bit more. And a little bit at a time. And there's a little bit, see this here, kind of his cheek. Let's put that in. And a little bit in there. And as you go, you can um, use a clean brush and just help it along, taking the edges and softening the edges. Now, some edges might not need softening. Take a look at your reference. A bit more down in here. Right along his uh, wing, it's fairly dark. I might even add a little bit of this uh, red to it. Just to darken this along his wing. Right in here too, right down by his feet. Gets fairly dark and underneath his belly is a little bit darker. And under his chin. Now there is a line. I'm just going to take the edge of the very tip of my brush, put a line down there, and a little bit on the tail. Now you just kind of have to take a look at your reference and really concentrate on those areas. And have subtle changes so they make a big difference and think of your subject matter the shape that will help you decide how to shade things and highlight things because you'll know that shape is round so it's going in towards the eye here so there is a little bit of a shadow cast right there. Same with his neck here. It's a little darker. Hi, Dot. Oh, geez. Well, how much? I don't know. Have you tried? Um, unsubscribing and then subscribing again sometimes that works i don't know why but and then there's a little bit just a bit i'm just kind of uh, lightly stro doing strokes light strokes with the very edge or tip of my brush along that edge there and some of these in here can be darker
and we're going to go in with a little bit more black. So let's make it some more of that black area. Um, now, if you have black uh, paint, use it. I got nothing against it. I just don't have any in this palette. I want a little thicker so it goes on a little bit and there's a dark area because the wing is turning in towards the body here so there's a little bit of a shadow cast and it goes into that there and then right in here comes down That. And there's quite a bit of shadow under this wing here on the tail. Like that. And a little bit in here where the two wings meet at the back. I'm just going to dab in a little bit. Not much, just a bit. And right in here, also where the, kind of where the wing meets. Goes like that. And then just a few dabs in here on the edge of that yellow there will be a little bit of shading going on in there not much just a bit and then I just wet my brush and I want to wet this area a little bit and let that black do its thing. Just a little. And then I can still see my lines from the uh, drawing. So I see that this, there's one big feather there. And then there's another one here. It's a little darker. And then when I get down into these areas here, this is when we can add a little bit more darken in it. Um, try and leave a little area though between the feathers. that way it's a little uh, easier to recognize where those um, little white lines are and I'm going to use a colored pencil to fix those up I don't have too much there can darken these a little bit like that and just the in here by the eye it's a little bit darker uh, oh you got your happy mail awesome <laughs> Yeah, um, for those that don't know, there is a Happy Mail level in Patreon and on um, YouTube Join, my membership. And it's the highest level. And you get Happy Mail every year, every month. 
So I'm going to use a little bit of that color and I'm going to put a little bit more shadow on the foot. Just pay attention to your reference. And that, let's do the beak. So the beak's got um, fairly darker red on there. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of that red. Just on the top. the very tip of my brush and then there's also on the very bottom part right in there his mouth is open so it's dark in there and on the very bottom of his beak bottom part like that Come down into here. It's... Okay, and let's dry that before it spreads too much. Yeah, the fun part, I like doing this part, using our colored pencils. So, let's start off with yellow. So we want a fairly bright yellow, but not green. And with some of the black, I'm just going to, it seeped into there, so I'm just going to fix that up with this bright yellow. Uh, and there's one that's, let's see, check your pencils before you use them, though, especially lighter colors. You don't want to rub on some um, nasty black mark there's a little bit of a goldy color it's good color for some of this shading area I use a, a variety of co um, colored pencils. Um, the ones I have in my wheel here are mostly um, Prisma and this one is Faber Castell Polychromos. And hmm, there's some other ones in there. It's whatever color I may be using. Right here, I'm just going to put a little bit of, actually, I'll bring you guys in for this part. So you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm 
just basically thinking about how the body of this bird is. There's a little in this photograph, there's it shows a little bit of dark around here. So I'm just going to put it in. And the tail feathers are a little bit dark, are more on the goldy side. It is a golden <laughs> oriole. Okay. And maybe a little bit in here. Okay, and I leave my pencils out in case I need to use them again. Um, I can even go a little bit darker more into um, this one is orange, no, mineral orange. This will work it's a little bit, yeah, darker in here along the throat. And a little bit more in there. Just lightly, too. You don't have to press hard. And along the edge of the wing, it's a lot darker. And as you get down into the bottom of the bird, it gets darker even more. Like that. Okay, I think that's good. Now I don't like how this black seeped in there. So what I can do is take some gouache. I'll show you how I fix things. So I'm gonna put. Let's see where did I put that. There it is. I'm just going to put a little dab of gouache in there. Now, not always will this work, sometimes it just keeps seeping. So, we'll try it. Uh, I don't want to use my good brushes for gouache though. Let me get a smaller brush here. You want it fairly thick, so don't water it down too too much. I'm just gonna put this gouache over top. See see if it will take that color out. Don't like that. It was kind of a odd. Oh, nice dot. I love pansies too. They look so nice. They're so cheerful. All right, so we have that. Um, let's put. If you want a good, these are the greatest pencil sharpeners, and you can get new um, blades for them. They're brass. They're a little expensive, but they're worth it. And they don't, you don't end up chewing your colored pencils. Um, this one, I don't know if it's got a name on it or not. Nope. But I got them on Amazon. Just uh, type in brass um, pencil sharpener. All right, so we want a fairly dark. the top part here and no 
nice sharp line there. It's fairly dark in here. It can even go darker than this color. And a little bit around there. And under here. Can you guys see all right? Really dark under here. And a little bit in there. And his little nose nostril. And I'm going to put a little bit more around the eye. That. And then a black or dark brown would work too. Let's see what I got here. Cherry, black cherry is a good color. I want a good sharp. No, oh, thanks, Lena. So right in here, really, really dark. If I can get it. Let's sit inside his mouth. And a little bit in here, not much. Let's his nostril a little bit more. That. And just on the very edge of this um, red, some of that. You know, it seems kind of um, nitpicky. <laughs> I guess you could say, but it does make a difference. Now he does have a, you can see the his eyelid. So I'm going to put kind of a peachy color. Want a good sharp point. Hopefully this will go, should go over it. And just on the outside of that red eye, let's put this peach color. And just put a little bit of a point towards the mouth. And then I'm going to take a marker and make that, oh, that's too small, make the uh, iris dark. I'm not going to worry about the highlight yet. And I'm just going to take this and go around and I'm just going to make some small hash marks in this area by the eye. So see why. And just around, just dots more or less. Uh, 
And, and this is just watercolor, so I can use the Sharpie pen. Now, if it if this had colored pencil on this part, don't use your um, felt tip markers. Do this first because if you use this on felt on um, colored pencils, it picks up the wax and it's going to wreck your marker. So I'm just looking at the lines here, some of these lines. So I can still see my lines in here. It's not the best, but I can see them. And I'm just going to fill in some of those areas where it was really dark. I'm going to try and keep the white areas so I can go back with a white pencil and fix those to be a little brighter. Now you could use um, uh, what do you call them? Those uh, brush markers for this too would work. Uh, it doesn't, it kind of um, gets a little bit on the gray side as you go up. Now these are the shorter ones, so I'm not going to get too crazy with these ones, but do some and they get a little bigger as they go here so they're a little bit thicker and then here we just see a little bit of kind of shadowing I guess you could say on the edge of these here so I'm not gonna do a whole lot of uh, shading in the whole thing just bits Just pay attention to the shadows. And you've got artistic license too. You can change things up. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'm going to put a line down there, a little bit darker in here. And Okay, now his nails are, are um, long too. I'll put those in black. A little bit of uh, dark, dark in there by his toes. Now, I didn't put this hole in the tree. It's totally up to you how much detail you want to put in. You don't have to put everything in. 
Now see the, see you can see light soft feathers there. Now we're going to use a white, um, white or gray, depending on uh, what you have. Sometimes uh, the gray doesn't show up enough. So yeah, you kind of have to try things out. Let's see, you know, on a fairly light gray, not too dark. Uh, let's see. Kind of a blue gray, actually. Lighter yet. That should do. It's not really a. Let's see. This one. It's kind of green. Mm. I'll try this one. Sharpen it. We need a good point. We're going to fix the top of the head too. Okay, so um, when you're doing this, you kind of just do a bunch of hash marks, but pay attention to the, the shapes again so these little marks here are in kind of a certain pattern think of um the the small feathers the ends of small feathers are kind of rounded shape or almost like a fish scale actually <laughs> And I'm not going exactly as what they're showing here. Because nobody's going to say that's that was wrong. No um, feather police are coming. <laughs> you just play with it. And you can take some um, black too. Uh, let's see. Darker bird. I'll use this one, I guess. Or what is this? Kunar. And then there's like shadowed areas. So you have your, your mid-tone, your highlight, and your shadow. And all these um, do add up to enhance your painting. And the whole thing with this whole process of drawing and painting is to relax. So don't rush. It doesn't have to be done right away. Enjoy it. Because that is the number one um, mistake is when you rush to get things done you make mistakes, you take shortcuts, and you don't do as good as you could have because you were too busy on a deadline that you gave yourself. And, and really, you don't need to do that. Enjoy. Okay. 
bit darker in here. Now I can take a little bit of this black and kind of make squiggles so it looks a little more rough, just lightly on the bottom. here is darker if you hold your pencil further back when you're doing this type of work it uh, looks a little more natural Do some white now. Not a whole lot of white in this one. And you could use a real fine, fine um, pen if you wanted to. There's just some really a little bit brighter lines in the wing here. We can put in. some in here a little bit not as many here just pay attention to your direction and then there's just a little bit I'll probably have to use a pen color or a pen of some sort let's see if I can get it okay so I want to put a highlight right there and there's a few little glistening areas on the uh, eye there and there's a I think I'm just gonna put a little bit of this here not much like that and a few on the toe like that doesn't take much now let's fix this this is dry now and I'm just gonna take my colored pencil and go right over top of it. Let's see, I think I need this one here a bit lighter first and the darker. That's better. Okay. And a little bit of white on right here where his beak is kind of got a little bit of a shine and above his nose. And it goes down right there. A little bit on here. Not much. 
And I think I'm going to put a little bit of black in here. Just going to flick some of this black into the yellow just to show that it's kind of overlapping his wing a bit like that. There we go. I think he's done. So there's our golden Baltimore Oriole. And this is number 27. So what's the date today? It's 25th. It's a couple days later. I'll post this on Instagram. And uh, hopefully uh, you're playing along too. Um, now, I've drawn some ahead of time. Because I like to, in the evening, paint them up as I'm watching TV. Um, if you were here on the last Thursday, let's see, what did we do? That's what we did. This was today's. Um, what did we do on Thursday? Hmm. Oh, we think that's what it was. I'll show you what we did Thursday, and there's a video that you can um, upload or not upload. You could <laughs> take a look at. Uh, this is my. No, I'll bring it out now. Yes. Oh, yes, we did the cat. And there's no need for a traceable with this one. And it's so easy. It's, it's beginner friendly. Anyone can do this. I hope you'll give it a try. And then um, Thursday, I think I'm going to be doing some more mono type printing with leaves. And this time we're going to do a little bit of a different we're going to paint on the jelly plate over the leaves to give the it more of a look of of a painting and then uh, lift it you're working on your skelly awesome so did that work out for you i was helping um z with her drawing and uh, you can get a hold of me too if you have some questions on how to draw stuff or paint stuff just uh twitter or instagram you can get a hold of me i also have an email if you want in my description it's much better is there anything you need to figure out because i could show you now if you want have some time If there's anything you want me to do, maybe just the middle rib bone. Okay, just hold on, I'll get the drawing.
All right. Uh, mine still looks a little straight. Uh, okay. It's almost Halloween, so we can play with this a little bit. Um, this here, are you talking about? You can. Oh, this? Yeah, you got my interest peaked last night, Sandra. <laughs> I had to go and do it. It was fun. Um, I think I need more shading under the rib cage. Okay, so yeah, in here, yeah, you do want to make sure it's good and dark in there. Because that does represent um, shadow cast by this here. And uh, if you take a um, stump, I don't know if I got one in here or not. It's a little easier. I don't know if you have one. Or a Tertullian. Oh, this one's pretty worn. Let me get a, a better one. I think I have one. Maybe. Nope. get them in different sizes but so yeah you just lightly rub into that and then bring it down into this area so it's not just a line of dark you want it to gradually lighten as you go bring it out but this is the darkest area in here and the same applies to the tops of these right here. They have to be a little bit dark because they're also cast. But the very bottom is light. Because the, the, the light is um, starting to either through the ribs or however it's just catching the very tips and then see there's very little um, uh, shine on this one here this vertebrae but as they get down these main ones right here they're the largest sections where the the um, highlight is brighter because the it's bowing out so you're going to it's coming towards you so you're they're usually bigger and there's more highlight on them 
So, make, so these are dimensional. So you got to make sure to show that they're thick. By doing that, you're putting that dark uh, shadow on top. And then the, the side of it has the highlight on it. And then along the side, because they're, it's bowed, so when you're, you're looking down at it, you're seeing something like this. So it's thick, but this is, this part here is this. And the, the back isn't as big. And then if you have an eraser, like a mono eraser, I don't know if you have those. If you don't, I would suggest you getting them if you want to do more um, hair or beards, that type of thing, or even this type of stuff. Uh, I don't know if I have one up here or down here. Let's see. And there's two sizes you can get. Hmm. I think I got them all upstairs. Must be upstairs. They're um, mono and micro mono or something like that erasers. And they're little uh, small erasers in a pen style. Uh, right now, do you decide on the foreshortening on the hand? And how do you decide on the foreshortening on the hand? How do I decide? You have them? Awesome. Um, foreshortening, that's, that's a real tricky one for even advanced people. But what you want to do, how to start is look at what's closest to you. So the hand is the closest part because it's in front of her face even. So it's the closest part and it's going to be larger than what it should be as far as body proportions because it's right up in front of you. So it's large. So just look at this part of the hand. Don't worry about this arm yet. Just the, just the very front portion that's closest to you. So nothing is overlapping it. Uh, that's a good way of looking at it. If you see something right up in front and if there's nothing overlooking it that's the main um, frontal position that you want to draw first then you start working your way back and this is when you have to um, look at shapes so this here I would start and what I did was I looked at this shape in comparison to the hand. So where did that, this shape, this point here is the elbow, where did it line up with this hand? So it's comparing size and shape to the thing in front of it afterwards, okay? So then you just draw your shapes and then 
the next one. Um, look at your reference photo and compare this shape with the size of the skeleton here. So how long is this shape and where does it line up with this beside it? And that way you're able to place it on your paper properly. And then shading will also help with it. And you just have, if you're having problems, take a picture of it, of your, of the doll, like you gave me, and then turn it into black and white. Because a lot of times it's a whole lot easier to do shading if you turn it into a black and white photograph. Oh, thanks, Lena. Yeah, the Tombow Mono. Yeah, those are great. That's what I use all the time. They're fantastic for hair, doing beards, that type of thing. Okay. So any other questions? I love it when you guys ask me questions. Maybe. Got something you want to figure out? Let me know. Oh, you're welcome. See? All right. So if you have any... Um, suggestions too i'd love to know what do you want me to do for november what's going to be the subject november is kind of a weird month <laughs> it's not winter and it's kind of fall is kind of over with because the leaves are gone that's what i associate fall with is leaves so what subject matter should we dive into Should we get into winter? Do you want to start early with like snowman paintings and landscape? What do you want? What do you want um, to learn? It would really help me if you could put it in the description below. So after the uh, stream has ended. Give me an idea down below. I'd love to know. That way I can plan my streams and um, upload more videos and that type of thing. And how long? Yeah, some of you haven't um, commented. How do you like your streams, long or short? Or do you even like streams? Winter animals would be fun and winter stuff. Yeah, winter animals like what? Polar bears, um, fox, what else? Rabbits. Do you like cute stuff or do you like more realistic? Um, uh, your vegetable people. Most fun, <laughs> the carrot guy. Oh, yeah, I forgot about him. Yeah, he was good. <laughs> uh, yeah, we could do some character um, drawings. <laughs> the carrot. That would be funny, Lena. How about the uh, carrot or vegetable people in Thanksgiving? <laughs> Getting all worried. <laughs> that would be funny. Alina and I are going to probably do um, some more live streaming together <laughs> um, if you guys are interested. So um, make sure you subscribe and, and uh, click the bell 
so you get notifications when we start doing that again. We did an awesome 10-hour um, sketchbook stream. It wasn't 10 hours. We, we divided it, but uh, it was fun, and we're going to do it again. Or I could do some more of the fairies and that type of thing. Mr. Mashed Potato running on me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> running from the bowl and the masher. <laughs> uh, snow leopards are really pretty. Yeah, all oh, snow leopards. Yeah, they would be nice. Yeah, we could do some of those. Fairies and elves. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Yeah, I love doing fairies and elves. They're so funny. I like mischiefy ones. And there's videos for a couple of them I've done online. Um, for the uh, members on Patreon and the YouTube membership, uh, your video and live stream are going to be coming up this weekend. So um, I will leave a notice in the community page on Patreon and YouTube. So make sure you uh, watch out for that. Um, all right, so if there's no other questions, I guess I'll let you guys go. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy the, oh, well, if you don't see me Thursday, enjoy the weekend. But Thursday, I am going to be playing with some leaves. So join us. It's a lot of fun. All right, I'll let you guys go. And you have a fantastic day and we'll see you thursday at 1 p.m eastern and we'll get our jelly plate and have some more fun bye for now